Hello, Algebra students. Today, we're going to try to put together all of the power properties that we've learned so far. We've already learned about <clears throat> um, what we do when we have multiplication and when we have division. So we've got the power properties, we've got the quotient properties. Um, just we're going to try to put it all together and hopefully keep everything all straight today. If you're watching this as a video, I would suggest that you pause the video on each of these slides, try the problems and see if you can get them right. Before you do that, though, let me remind you of whoops, that's not what I meant to do. Uh, let me remind you of this, that when we multiply monomials, if they have the same bases, if it's the same variables, for instance, then we're going to add those exponents, right? And if we have coefficients numbers out in front, those still get multiplied. It's still a multiplying problem. Also, when you take a look at a problem like number one, I want you to notice that we've got two different variables. And typically, we like those to go alphabetically. So m's come before n's, even though in the problem, the n is written first. So this m, remember, really has an m to the first power. And I have an m to the second power. That gives me m to the third power. And then for my n's, I have an n to the third and an n to the fourth. Altogether, that's going to be n to the seventh. We're adding those exponents. And remember what that really means. So for instance, for the m's, I had an m and then I had an m times m. So that's three m's that were all getting multiplied. That's how I get my exponent. In number two, I can multiply the coefficients. So two times three gives me six. The a's, now remember, I'm not multiplying the exponents, I'm adding the exponents. So here I have three of those, that's a terrible arrow, three a's, and then here's three more a's, that's six a's that are getting multiplied together. Again, notice the difference between the two times three versus the three plus three. <clears throat> In number three, I see a coefficient of three and a coefficient of two, so I'm going to multiply those to make six. And then for my x's, I have an x to the first, and I have an x to the second, and I have another x to the first. So that would be x to the fourth power. For my y's, I have four y's in the first monomial, two more in the second monomial, and then one more in the third. So 4 plus 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7, so y to the seventh. For the next slide, <clears throat> we've got um, power of powers. So we've got exponents inside and exponents outside. So let's remember that that really means every number and variable that's inside the parentheses gets raised to that power. So if you have an exponent inside, it multiplies with the power that's on the outside. And then don't forget that we do have to take care of the coefficients as well. So in number one, x to the third to the seventh power, remember you could write that out. You could have x to the third times x to the third times x to the seven of those, which would be really tedious, or you just know the shortcut rule and it's x to the 21st power. For the two, remember this is, it's not exactly distribution, but it's very similar to distribution. This exponent is going to go on to that a to the fourth and onto the b. So a to the fourth to the third power would multiply those and get a to the twelfth power. The b, remember, really does have an exponent. It's an exponent of one. And when I multiply those powers, I'm going to get b to the third power. And <clears throat> for number three, when I evaluate this, really common mistake. A lot of people want to say that three to the third power is nine. But remember, we're really talking about 3 times 3 times 3. So 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27. x to the 6th power and y to the ninth power. In the quotient rules, oh, I can't do that, can I? Sorry about that. Um, in the quotient rules, I have to um, subtract powers, and I'm still simplifying coefficients. These are still fractions. The coefficients in front, it's just a fraction that we have to simplify. But in number one, what I see for the x's is I've got 
x to the seventh on the top, x to the fourth on the bottom, that would give me three more up on the top. When I subtract, I get three. For the y's, y to the third, y to the second, subtract those, and I just get a y to the first power. You don't really need to write the one though. For number two, <clears throat> I have the 28 and the seven. That would simplify, right? I could divide both of these by seven and that would be a four right there and a one right there. Knowing that it's just a one in the denominator, I may not need a denominator. So the four I know is gonna be in the numerator. For the A's, I've got A to the fourth on the top, A to the second on the bottom, that's A to the second when I subtract those. B to the fifth and B, really B to the first power would give me B to the fourth power, subtracting my exponents. In number three, what is the biggest number, the greatest common factor that I could use and divide the 18 and the 30, each of them by that number? Let's divide them both by six. So when I'm simplifying this, that's going to be a three, that's going to be a five. Now this time I know I'm going to have a fraction because I've got a denominator number. I've got a five that's going to live downstairs. The three is in the numerator. Looking at the x's, I'm going to have x to the third power on the top. I have just that single y that's there on the top. And then for my z's, I've got 6 on the top and 4 on the bottom, so I would have z squared on the top. Now, thinking about these kind of problems, we haven't tried some of these problems yet, <clears throat> but it's really good to make sure that you're understanding the whole rule for all of these. I want to figure out what the n has to be in each of these problems so that this will work. So I have 4 times 2 and that gives me 8. We're all good there. Let's look at the y's because I have the those already all done. I'm not missing anything there. y to the 4th and y to the 1st would give me y to the 5th. That's all taken care of. So now I'm looking at the x's. I've got x to some power and x to the 2nd power gives me x to the 7th power. <clears throat> Remember, I'm adding those exponents, so I just really have to figure out what number plus 2 gives me 7, and n would have to be equal to 5 in that problem. In number 2, I've got the missing thing that's that I'm looking for here is the exponent that's on the outside of the parentheses. So I'm looking at, this would really be a distribution kind of a problem, 5 to what power would give me 125? Or 4 times what other exponent would give me 12? Or 2 times what other exponent would give me 6? And I hope that that makes sense, that that's going to be a 3. 5 to the 3rd power is 125. a to the 4th and then to the 3rd power, that would be a to the 12th. And b to the 2nd to the 3rd power would be b to the 6th. Looking at number three, this is a division kind of a problem. And I already have the 16 divided by four. That does give me this four right here. So that's all taken care of. The X's, I have to worry about the Y's are done. Y to the fourth, Y to the third. Yep, there's one more Y on the top. So I need to figure out what the N should be. So that N minus, there's really a one on that X, would give me four. And that would have to be 5 again for that exponent. x to the 5th over x to the 1st would give me x to the 4th. When I have problems <clears throat> with a, an exponent on the outside of the parentheses, you know that we're going to have to distribute that exponent. Remember, it's not true distribution, but sort of. And I want to first clean up everything inside those parentheses. We're going to simplify all of that. So I would have 2 times 3 is going to give me a 6 in the parentheses. x to the first and x to the second would give me x to the third. And I have a y to the third. And that's all to the second power. Don't forget that when I have this exponent and it goes on the 6, that will not be 12. 6 to the second power is 36. We'll have x to the sixth power because we're multiplying that and y to the sixth power. <clears throat> if I have an exponent outside the parentheses and other stuff, 
it's order of operations. I've got to take care of all of the stuff inside that first set of parentheses because that two that's on the outside there, that's an issue. That can't just hang out there. I can't combine everything that's in parentheses in the first set of parentheses and the second set of parentheses and then decide what I'm going to square later. This first set of parentheses really has to be squared first. And remember what this really means. If I'm squaring that, I could rewrite it as 3a squared b times 3a squared a squared b, so I'd have two of those, times 2ab to the third. When I do this, 3 to the third, or 3 to the second power, remember that's not 6, that's going to be 9, a to the fourth power, and b to the second power. And then I have the 2ab to the third. Then I don't have any other parentheses that have to be there. I don't have any exponents on the outside. So I can just start by combining things. The 9 times 2 gives me 18. I have an a to the fourth. And then another a to the first gives me a to the fifth. And b to the fifth when I add those exponents. For this quotient property, I want you to notice that we have stuff in the numerator that has to be simplified. And in the denominator, simplifying is going to mean I want to take care of the stuff that's in parentheses with that other power on the outside. So in the numerator, 2 times 6 would be 12. x to the fourth and x to the third gives me x to the seventh power, same base as we add those exponents. In the denominator, the 3, the coefficient, is not getting cubed. Only the x squared is. So we would multiply those two powers and get x to the 6th power. Now it's a quotient problem. 12 over 3, or 12 divided by 3. It's just going to be a 4. And I have x to the 7th on the top, x to the 6th on the bottom. That's just an x, or an x to the 1st. So I hope that that review helps and that you're ready for the worksheet today. Um, we have a worksheet that mixes all of this stuff together, and then there is a learning check for you in Schoology. Let your teacher know if you need any help.